Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very exciting video. In today's video we are going to check out the all new, brand new Diatone Mamba Systems 4th generation flight controller. This is the MK4H7V2. You are not going to want to miss this video. <laughs> Let's go. All right, pilots, so I'm excited to go over this because it has been a while since we've seen a flight controller that has just checked every single box all the way around the charts, and this guy really, really does. It is packed with features. So this here is a fourth generation flight controller from a company who makes all types of electronics. They even make motors and propellers and full-on drones. They even have FPV cars. They literally do it all. So what I've got here is the flight controller by itself. You can purchase this in a combo with a 55 amp 128k ESC or a 65 amp 128k ESC. That's your choice. If you're looking for certain features, you can buy the flight controller by itself and then pair it up with any ESC that you wish. Let's go ahead and crack this puppy open and see what comes inside. So if I crack this like seal tape here, <laughs> that is nice. All right, so let's go ahead and pop this guy out. Oh, it comes with a little bit of foam, keeping it all safe and sound. We're gonna set that aside and just see what it comes with. So you're getting spacers. Okay, so here's your regular grommets if you wanted to uh, push those in or you got your spacers too. I guess that's your choice how you handle it. You got plenty of each. Then you've got different plugs. This is your DJI plug. You've got uh, plugs for your choice to match up with any connector that you wish. That's why they're cut off like that. And then you've got uh, an ESC to flight controller plug. So if you purchase one of their ESCs, You'll be able to just plug this in right here where it says FC, that's the flight controller end, you plug that in, and then this end here will go to your ESC and you're ready to go. If you're not and you're unsure what to do, I have a full video walking you through how to wire up any 4-in-1 ESC and all the steps you need to do it. I will link that video for you down in the video description. Now setting this aside and taking a look at our flight controller itself, we can remove this padding and take a look and I mean my God. So take a look here, we've got a sticker right here and uh, there's no reason to keep that on but this is a warning, I'm not sure if you can read that. It says, during operation, please wear an anti-static equipment. All soldering equipment must be grounded. So if you don't know what that is or you don't know what they're talking about, they are talking about electrostatic discharge, ESD. And you'll need something like this if you're gonna try to prevent that. And this is just a wristband that you use and you'll see the metal contact right there. And what happens is you put this on and you want it to be nice and snug. And then you've got this bracelet here and you'll need to ground this end. So you are grounding your body because they say that your body is made of electrons and you can actually uh, disturb these and pass these on to your electronics. And that would cause a electro static shock that could potentially fry your electronics. It's more serious when you're working with computers and things like that, but hey, if you're working with this stuff and you care about it, get yourself a band. And on the end, you've got a little alligator clip right here and you would go ahead and ground this out to something. If you have the full mat like I do, I've got a full working ESD mat and what that one you unplug this and this is basically like a DC plug and it actually plugs into your mat and then you ground your mat to a ground that is you know metal table or an actual ground that is grounded to the home where the home or office is grounded outside all the way. So that's really cool if that's something that you care about or something that you want to do. All right so let's keep going. If you flip this guy over, we've got a QR code on the back and it's letting us know that this is a Mamba H743V2. It's giving us our target, super important, and this is a fortune. If you know how to work Betaflight, you can pull your target out of Betaflight, but if you're new or you're unsure, you can keep this sticker around, or shoot, you could just leave it on. I wanna get in here, so I'm gonna peel this off 
because they're hot. Oh, they're hiding a lot of goodies under there. So one of the quick things I want to mention that I've noticed right away is right here is Wi-Fi, and that's super cool. If I flip it over, you'll actually see the antenna that's built into the PCB. This is super, super awesome. That is what that QR code is that we just pulled off. It allows you to scan with your phone, pull up the Speedy B app, and then you can do everything you want everything on this flight controller that you can do with a PC right from your phone. And that's super awesome when you're out in the field and you need to adjust something, you know, maybe something small, but something important. It may even keep you from arming. You're able to pull up your phone, log into the app, boom, bang, boom, you're back in the air. So one of the next main features that you're gonna notice is there is dual gyro. You're gonna see one is like this and one is like this. Very cool, check them out. They're right here underneath the microcontroller unit. You've got one right here and one right here. These are the ICM 42688 gyros. Very, very nice the way that they laid those out. Also, I'm noticing that there's two buttons. There's a button here and a button here. So how cool is that? You've got one for boot, like if you need to get the microcontroller into DFU mode, and the other one is for the LED. So that is an actual LED control. So what that means is if I wire up LEDs to my board, I press one click, and that will change the color. If I double click, that will put me into flash mode. And then if I hold it, it will actually turn it on or off. So if you're off, it'll turn it on. And if you're on, it'll turn it off. In the midst of all of these features and all of these new awesome big features, they found a way to still squeeze in right here, Betaflight OSD right next to it. You've got 128 megs of flash. We've got a SPL06 barometer. You've got eight UARTs on this mother. You've got IC squared, you've got S bus f port you've got buzzer pads current pads eight sets of ESC signals so what does that mean that means that I've got these two big plugs right here and I can plug two ESCs into this thing come on guys you've got air unit support right why does that matter? I can just wire up my air unit or I can just wire up my Vista. Why does that matter? And I'm gonna tell you why that matters. If I flip this over right here on the backside, you've got a designated plug that is just for DJI. So I can plug in here and then I can go to my Vista and do what I do, or I can plug in here and go to my air unit and do what I do. And why this matters and what makes this awesome is right here, you're gonna see this little jumper pad and this pad right now currently stock out of the box is jumped to the nine volt. So that means you can run your air unit, right? You don't have to worry about putting on a Beck because there's an onboard Beck. But if you wanted to run the Vista or you want full power, you're powering something else and you just wanted to utilize that, you can go ahead and unbridge this and then bridge over to the next one and that will give you full voltage heading out the power pad of this connector here. Now, if we keep on a kicking right here next to this connector, you're gonna notice all these pads. You've got your five volt, you've got ground, you've got TX3, RX3, and then you've got your VTX power pad. That is if you're running analog. What you would do is connect your VTX right here, and then you can actually program to a switch. Yes, this has the VTX switch, which is very, very nice. You've got receiver protection on board. You've also got TVS diode protection. Protection. You've got three Becks on board. You've got the 3.3 volt, you've got the 5 volt, and you've got the 9 volt. Holy cow! Three Becks on board, and I'm noticing the two big ones right here, one and two. I bet you that's 9 volt, and I bet you that's 5 volt right there. And that's what you're going to use to power all of your fancy stuff, your LEDs, your GPSs, your, your Vistas, your air units. All that stuff gets powered off of these two monsters right here. It is a regular 30 by 30 mounting, and it also does full LiPo voltage. So you can connect anything from a 3S all the way to a 6S, and there's an internal BEC that will protect everything on board and make everything happy. Now, flipping it over to the backside, this is not necessarily a new feature, but this is a huge feature if you have not ever dealt with diatone or Mamba stuff. You get LEDs, and these are not normal LEDs. Like normally on a flight controller, if you got a blue and you got a green and like green says I'm getting power blue says I'm getting communication and that's great because I need those I need to know when those are happening but what mama's done is they have gone a step further 
check this out. And you, you may already be familiar with this because like I said, it is not a new feature, but is an awesome feature and they have not yet stopped doing it, which is great because looky here, you've got all of these LEDs lined up right here and they've labeled them for you. So this first one here actually tells you if your gyro is getting good power and communication. Because when you set up an LED with a resistor and you wire it on a line, a data line or a power rail, if there's an issue of any sort, it will short that out and the LED won't light up. So that's why you have a little LED telling you my gyro's good. Underneath that, you've got one telling you if your microcontroller unit is good. Right under that, your 9 volt rail, you've got your 5 volt rail, your 3.3 volt rail, and then your full voltage control rail. <laughs> Guys, this is super awesome. This means that no matter what I'm working on, if I'm having any complications at all, or maybe I didn't know I was having any, this will alert me and let me know. No, the LED doesn't come on if there's a problem. The LED goes off if there's a problem, which is super awesome. Or maybe I just want to look and I want to see, oh, look, all LEDs are on. Everything is working. Everything is great. Hey, that's an awesome feature. All right, pilots, let's go ahead and take a quick sec and jump into the Scopey Scope. Ooh. All right, pilots, let's take a quick peek around. First thing we're gonna notice is that big, beautiful sticker we just talked about. And as you can see, it's an H743V2. And this is the fourth gen, this is awesome. There's that type C USB that we talked about. Right here is where you're gonna put your Betaflight LEDs. You've got your connectors, which is if you wanna do the Mamba LED, you've got the ground and you've got the five volt. Back here on this side, there's a lot of magic happening. And the problem, some will say with diatone, is they don't label the boards. So if you did have to make a quick swap real quick, you would have to jump into a diagram or you would have to refer back to this video or, you know, they do send a paper, open up your paper and check your pads. But ideally what you've got here is you've got everything for all of your ESCs. You've got your current stuff. You've got your, uh, well, this is a UART right here. And then over here you got ground and power. Uh, you've got everything in this little divider. If you can see this little divider right here, that is for your camera. And then all this here is your ESC. So you got, you know, uh, your second ESC and then your first ESC is here. Here is your crystal oscillator. That is for your microcontroller unit. If we head over to this side, it says 301. Not sure exactly what that is, but you've got connectors again here. So this is your 3.3. All of this, so you've got your receiver stuff here, you know, five volts, ground, RX1, TX1, TX5, RX5, and then we've got our boot and our LED control. Down here, we've got everything for buzzers and VTXs and all that stuff. Right here, you've got the dual gyro that we talked about. It does look like this telanthalum capacitor is a tad bit crooked. Not that it matters, it will affect anything, but it could have been a little straighter. Uh, <laughs> not a big deal. Uh, there's our Wi-Fi antenna like we talked about. Uh, if I flip the board over, these are the two connectors that we talked about. Uh, one for this ESC, one for that ESC. Um, and you can tell, see how it says S1234? That is going to be your main ESC. So if you're only running one, be sure to use that one. If you're running two, then you can head over here where it's S5, 6, 7, 8, so on and so forth. Okay. Now here are those two BECs that we talked about. One's here and one's here. And it's not just this big thing. This is nothing more than an adductor. It is the entire connection of all this stuff stuff running together that makes that magic happen. That's what that is. Over here, you've got a five volt ground and again, the Mamba LED. That's what that is. That's for your LED. They're just through pads. You know, there's two different types of pads. There's regular pads and then there's through pads. That's what those are. So if I flip it over, you'll see they are right there. So that shows you that they go through the board. That's the hole. And down here, this is your VTX section. This is where you'll solder up your VTX. And that is that jumper pad we talked about. I don't know if you can see that. It says nine volt there and it says full voltage there. So these two are bridged. Right here is where that sticker was. That's not damage, that's just a sticker. But that's your Betaflight OSD. This here is your onboard flash. And this here is the chip that is running all of the magic that's happening for this Wi-Fi here. All right, 
Uh, moving right along, this is your DJI connector. These are the two buttons we talked about. See them? So you've got the top one for one, and then you've got the bottom one for the other one. One is boot, and one is for LED. Uh, heading over here, you've just got a couple more components. This is your TVS diode. This is what is actually a big part of this because it is allowing filtration and it's ripping out some of those bigger, uh, stronger signals and noises, you know, different, different wavelengths of stuff happening. Those are gonna protect you and keep your board flying good and sounding good. All right, and then the last thing over here is your TVS diode. You can see that right here. This is gonna help out with removing some of that noise and keeping this thing flying good, sounding good, and feeling great. All right, pilots, that is gonna do it for the fourth gen Mamba H7 flight controller. I can tell you right now, me personally love this stuff. I'm going to put this in a quadcopter as soon as I turn this camera off. So I hope that you guys had an awesome time going over this. I hope that you learned a little bit about diatone, learned a little bit about flight controllers. I hope that you guys will go pick up your own. I'll put a link for you down in the video description. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one.